WUSA 9 Weather Watch Alert is sponsored by Morgan & Morgan. And we're back now on WUSA 9 Plus. I'm Leslie Foster, of course, following what has happened after this flash flooding and the situation specifically around Rhode Island Avenue at the District Dogs location. We'll go right to some video. We've been covering this through the evening, showing you the agonizing moments where dogs were being rescued from that business. This is the backside of that business where there is a bike store that has become a sort of warehousing area for all of the dogs that were taken and rescued from district dogs. Now we can see the shot panning over away from this U-Haul. On the other side of the U-Haul is the actual district dogs store, which has not been a stranger to situations with flooding there. Just last year, it flooded three times in one month. Now what we see now are people who are standing with dogs. We're, it's not clear right now whether these are volunteers, whether these are owners. You and I are seeing this video together at the very same time. But you can see there is crime scene tape over in the area, caution tape, some barriers there. Barriers that really are going to be part of the questioning of how this happened today, where a run of the mill storm in August caused a near tragic situation at the district dogs. We saw at least a couple dozen dogs taken from this particular business, but we also witnessed a moment which appeared to show some very sad faces and people in tears. So we're waiting for an update that is supposed to take place at any moment now from DC Fire and EMS, where they give us some updates about what happened. First, the happy part, right? This is a rescuer who is bringing out some of the very first dogs we saw when people were really around this area, agonizing and nervous, filled with anxiety, wondering about the dogs that were inside. District Dogs is a dog boarding location. They also have some dog daycare services there. So if you are a dog owner, you know that many times you board the dog when you're out of town or you're not in the area. So there is a good chance that there may be some other families who are wondering about their fur babies and hearing about this from afar. These are some dogs that were removed from the business at the height of all of this. So what we know is it started raining, right? There was a storm here. Topper and Michaela had been telling us about it. And this is what it looked like when the flash floods started to form pretty quickly around this business. You see those cones, there were barriers there, but even the barriers are buried by the water at some point. Topper mentioned that there may have been a little over two inches of water, but that doesn't even tell you about the trauma that was likely happening in that business at the time because as we looked at the outside of the business and we looked at where the watermark was that was really even up to the shoulders of people that may have been in there or rescuers at the time this is giving you a sense of what it was like on the outside but we have no idea of the anxiety and the fear that was going on inside that building. So we come back out now and we see the water has receded, but it does not tell the story of those awful moments inside this business where people who work there agonized about the safety of the dogs in their care. If you look to the far left of your screen, you can see there were barriers there. You can see folks who worked at district dogs coming out of that space and just to the back of the business is where the dogs that were rescued were taken to be held, probably to be cuddled, to possibly be reunited with their loved ones. So here we are on this August evening after what was again a run of the mill kind of storm, kind of storms we get here in August in this area, severe weather, but no tornado issue in this particular area. And we are all back here at the end of this, wondering about the moments in between this story, the agonizing moments for the people who worked at District Dogs, who had to make decisions, split second decisions about their own safety, about the safety of the dogs in their care. And then there are the questions about what caused all of this and the infrastructure issues. I'm gonna bring in my colleague, Rafael Sanchez Cruz, because Rafa, you've been covering this business for some time. About a year to the day, mm -hmm. 
Last year, this business flooded three times in one month, three right. times having to go through this very situation. Right. And yet they're here today again. Right, it prompted a visit from, I mean, officials from across the district. We're talking water officials. We're talking from uh, council member McDuffie who was touring the business and telling the owner, Jacob Hensley, you know, what's going on? What are you facing? And again, what we're talking about is that this building that has apartments on top has now the, this business portion at the bottom, right? They were saying that before what was there was a wall, so ideally, that those businesses would not be there and that's what's leading to this flooding that we're mm. seeing time and time again. I mean, when we had the conversation last year, we were talking about the type of flood that you only see once every 100 years. This was not This it. was not that. This no. was not it. And in the meantime, they said they were going to install those barriers, but you can't see those barriers in those images that you're seeing on your screen right now. And that was just a temporary solution. We're a year out. We haven't seen those changes. And we were talking again about this project that's been invested billions of dollars and where it was going to actually help the sewer drainage to avoid situations like this. Especially in this area, we're talking where there's a tunnel, there's public transportation nearby, now there's a residential area and this business portion that's being affected time and time again. And you can see this is from that last year. That was from year. August yes. of last year. Of last year. And you can mm -hmm. see how the business is actually sunken in a little bit down more. So that water rushes down from the doors and actually uh, our meteorologist Michaela was was asking us because she saw those dogs that were just completely wet and was asking if the water was coming down. No, it all comes down from that front door portion mm -hmm. and just rushes in all the way into the back of the business, which is actually really big. We were able to tour it last year as they were had fans to kind of air it out and fix all the damages caused by these uh, by the floods. However, Again, we're seeing the situation time and time again. I think it's important to follow up as to where it's going and having that conversation of what's to be done. I was actually on social media right now and I mean, some elected uh, commissioners are having the conversation of should that business be there? Do they plan to leave? And, you know, residents in the area saying the exact same thing. People sure. that live above a district dog saying, we weren't expecting that. We feel bad for the owner. We feel mm -hmm. bad for the employees. And of course, we feel bad for these dog owners and these these dogs, right? These these family members yeah. that went through this traumatic situation. We saw that dog running away, looked scared, Barry. and they had to rush, you know, rush and, and grab them. And also we saw the owner, you know, embrace one of his employees as he was in tears. And again, the conversation that we had last year was they were telling me, we're not trained to do this. We're right. trained to take care of dogs. We're trained of other types of emergency situations, but nothing like water rushing into your business and trying to save yourself, as well as these dozens of dogs that are under your care as you're trying to figure out what's going on. We were watching in real time as the first responders were in there and gave us a glimpse of what they were dealing with. And at the point that we could see a little bit inside district dogs, the water looked to be up to the thighs of some people and then, you know, the knees of some folks. So they've got to wade through this big location. You've toured it. They've got to get to the dogs. Mm -hmm. They've got to pluck them from the water or from wherever they are. They may be scared, so they may not want to come out immediately. I mean, this was a big operation here to get these dogs to safety. Yeah, and I think when we, you know, we see the images, we think that we would know how to act in the conversation we were having last time as most people, you know, you don't know what's going on. It all happens so quickly. I mean, we can see it there. People do not know, one, what they're going to do to get out and how long it's going to last. And that was the conversation. Again, the water actually clears out relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. However, those moments of panic, I, I just don't think we can describe them unless you're inside and you're thinking of those dogs and yourself at that time. And again, I want to mention that church right across the street that's yes. been dealing with the same issue. Their parking was completely flooded and they said this is something that we've been dealing with for decades. And the only reason that they felt that it was getting attention was because the dogs were being affected. And we, I mean, who doesn't love a dog, right? But again, they're saying the infrastructure in this area has been a constant issue. And actually the businesses across the street, same situation. I've been reporting on the other side of the street mm -hmm. with the exact same struggle and those drivers being caught up in those, uh, in those floods and just 
unable to get out and relying on DC rescuers to be there like they were today. Yeah, and they had to be there today. There was a, a point before we actually knew what was happening with district dogs where all we could see were, you know, three or four cars that were trapped in those floodwaters. We didn't see any people there, so clearly rescuers were able to get to them. Those cars are a total loss at this point now. Um, but I want to get back to something. So what was being built was supposed to be called the Northeast Boundary Tunnel. It was supposed to be done in March of 2023. All these resources from the city going into this effort in the hopes of keeping what we saw happen today from happening again. Right. So all this money goes into this and it didn't work because it's not complete. Well, and part of the conversation that they were having last year was that we're seeing these types of scenarios more and more often. Again, I think now in DC, we've kind of normalized it a bit, but they're saying, we just have not seen this amount of rain mm -hmm. consistently. And that was part of the conversation of how do we advance this, right? Something that was approved years ago, and right. now we're seeing these changes happen. And again, I, I keep emphasizing the conversation that they had with the owner last year that, that those businesses were not there. It was a wall. So mm -hmm. they didn't have this constant issue of residents complaining about flooding because it was water just hitting against the wall. Now we have businesses. Now we have dogs. Now we have stories. We have employees. And that's why we're getting these testimonies that perhaps they need to reevaluate having businesses there. Maybe it was right. a mistake. Maybe you shouldn't permit these businesses to Correct. be in locations where they are flood prone and where the most heartbreaking thing can happen in a nanosecond when there's a flash flood. Mm -hmm. And if you can't get to everybody, whether it's a human or a dog, um, it's a significant loss. We don't know what we're going to hear yet from fire officials, but our colleague Eric Flack and James Hash have been down there the whole time. Eric, I think that you're there and I think we might be able to talk to you. Is that right? Hey, I'm here, Les. Um, over my shoulder, if you can hear me, fire officials are gathering right now as they prepare for a news conference to update us on exactly what happened here. I can tell you that they've been on the scene here for about a half hour conferring with each other, with the district dogs ownership, with the leadership here with DC Fire and EMS and the men and women who were on the scene and so bravely charged into that that business and carried out, you know, dog after dog to safety. I can tell you the questions that are on my mind first and foremost is, you know, how many dogs did they bring out? Uh, did any dogs not make it out? We did see a number of emotional faces, both on uh, the face of, of some of the people who appeared to be owners and, and really some of the uh, district dog uh, employees, as well as uh, my, my buddy James points out, um, the faces on some of the, the, the firefighters and the EMS workers. And there were DC Metro Police uh, here as well. And, and there was really emotion on everybody's face near the end. Again, at the beginning, there was a lot of joy because it was just a parade of dogs being you know, successfully brought out, wet, cold, shivering, but, but okay. And volunteers were taking them and rushing them up the street to, to, to the garage where they made kind of a makeshift shelter. And, and then right at the end, there seemed to be con some concern as we, as, as we were talking about earlier, uh, it, the, the location that the dogs are in. And I think uh, the uh, assistant, I believe, uh, fire chief is heading over right now to give us this briefing. But uh, the location that the dogs were in is set back a little bit. Um, we're on sticks. Can we just move it a little bit closer? Just split the difference a little bit. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to get a live update here um, from fire officials as they walk over. Uh, where is a good spot here? Right here. Everybody ready? Hi, I'm John Donnelly, Chief of DC Fire and EMS. Um, this evening, uh, right before, right as the rainstorm began, the units from 12 Engine, which are located behind us at 5th and Rhode Island, uh, noticed the rapid buildup of water underneath the uh, Rhode Island Avenue Railroad Bridge here. They immediately self-dispatched down to the scene, called for additional assistance from our rescue teams, and um, started helping people out of water. And right away, 12 Engine got uh, people from a car that was stranded and other people whose cars, and we have up to five cars and a truck that were under the bridge, um, disabled in the water, and the water's rising rapidly. This is happening over a few minutes. Uh, the rescue boats got here and evacuated two more people, and the rest of the people were self-evacuating through the water on their own. It's a very dangerous situation. 
over um, those few minutes, the water raised uh, six feet air roughly to the middle of the doors or above the middle of the doors on District Dogs behind us. And then one of the um, walls gave in and District Dogs flooded. And as a result of that, um, we've had some fatalities for, for the dogs and we, the fire department assisted the district dogs employees in rescuing 20 additional dogs and getting the people that worked at district dogs out of the building safely. Some of them have uh, been assessed for injuries and we're still assessing that. Nobody has been transported from the scene. And overall today, over 20 people were helped uh, out of the water by district fire and EMS from this location. Can you talk about the number of dogs that unfortunately did not make it out as well? is the emotion we saw on the faces of both the employees but even your own men and women here on the scene. So um, in, instead of giving a number, I, I'd like to just wait so the district dogs is contacting the families uh, involved in those dogs, but the emotion is, is it's hard to watch. It's unbearable. Um, this is losing uh, a member of your family or being scared that you did. And, you know, we've all been through uh, or seen that in our communities. It's a terrible thing. Can you verify it's more than one? And you also say, which, which wall was it that collapsed here? There's a, uh, a front wall where the windows came in and then it pushed the water into the, it let all the water into the building that way. Um, yeah, uh, multiple dogs? Yeah, multiple dogs, I'm sorry. I forgot the first part of the question. Multiple Chief, dogs. there's a history here on Rhode Island Avenue. Uh, this location has put up some barricades because it's been flooded before. They have complained, as have others along this route, that public programs to alleviate flooding um, have not been successful. So I'd just like to you to address, uh, you know, I heard your own people over on the scanner on the way down here saying, you know, it happened again. This happens all the time. Does this happen all the time? And, and why can't we get it to stop? So I've never seen anything like this um, here. And I, I'm unaware of the particulars with this building. I do see some some walls up i'm not sure what those are so i think that's going to have to come out as we look at it over more time i just don't have that answer today the flooding so program in general though yeah. i mean is it failing so i, I think that our uh, under the what's the bypass tunnel called that's being built everywhere we're seeing that work as it comes online it's my understanding it's not online in this area but we're digging uh hundreds uh, probably close to 100 miles of tunnels under the city right now and that's going on all over i know it's worked in other areas and i'm sure once it gets online here it'll work dc water is working extremely hard on that you had a question about yes sir uh, can you just walk us through what went into that rescue we saw um, firefighters knocking through the drywall as they sort of pulled out some of those pets earlier yeah um, so the firefighters here at the command post observed uh, people swimming out of the building, coming out of the door. Um, it, to them, it appeared they were in trouble. They immediately deployed their resources. Uh, the firefighters came in and uh, helped the employees uh, get through. Some of the easier ways to do it were to go through drywall. They did that. Uh, there's significant damage in there, so they had to work in that. It's a very hazardous environment with electricity, with power, with disentanglement things. So it's a very hard and uh, rough situation to work in. And about how many employees were trapped inside? I believe seven, although there may have been more people, including families. We Overall on the site, we helped about 20, which I think puts about 10 people in district dogs. Chief, I just want to make sure I understand. So you're saying, to your knowledge, you've never like heard of severe flooding issues here? So I've never heard of severe flooding issues, me personally, at District Dogs. I, I'm aware that we have some flooding here. The owner was talking to another employee saying, this is not our fault. They don't, they're going to say it's our fault and it's not our fault. What's your message? So um, I, I don't know that how it could be their fault. Will there be any sort of investigation? Is this warrant one? So absolutely, I, I would say we're going to look at this, figure out what happened. Uh, we'll work with DC Water and all the relevant authorities and figure out um, what's going on here. Now, I did talk to one woman who got her dog and said she was watching on the webcam as they, the employees inside, were able to rescue a number of the dogs and get. I mean, can you talk a bit to that and your reaction to their actions in there? I think the district dogs and employees were heroes. Absolutely. Did that, you see those red barriers up there? You know, and, and this place always. I mean, something is really working. What, what does the city need to do to make sure that you're able to keep people and dogs safe? So we'll have to figure that out in the after action. That's not uh, my area of expertise. So. So
sir, where do we go from here? You mentioned this will be investigated. Who's taking over, and what are some of those answers you're looking for? So at this point, I don't have that. I imagine H. Sema generally leads our after-action reviews, and we'll, we'll be talking to Director Rodriguez and the city administrator, and um, the city administrator is definitely on top of this. Just to confirm, how many people were rescued from their cars and under the bridge? Overall, 20 people were assisted. Some of them helped themselves out, but there are 20 people in the water affected by this. And were and any, I'm going to have to go ahead. Were any in peril? Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Will we get another update once you... I, I don't think so tonight. I don't, I'm not going to have any new information Final words for you. to the community. Um, you know, keep your families affected by this today and your thoughts and prayers. And um, be careful out there. Don't drive into standing water. Thanks, Chief. So that was the D.C. Fire Chief giving us a rather unfortunate and sobering update that despite the fact that many dogs were successfully rescued and brought back to their owners and we can imagine safe and getting warm tonight that an unknown number of dogs, a number that the chief didn't want to put out there in the public right now because the owners here are still notifying family they did not make it out so obviously a lot of heavy hearts down here we saw the joy and now we're experiencing some of the grief and sometimes the grief is worse than the joy and that kind of seems like this is one of those deals so last back to you it's heartbreaking it's heartbreaking and i think we started to think that this might have happened when we saw what we saw in real time when you showed us Know, the district dogs employees comforting themselves but only after listening to the chief did we get a more fulsome picture of what they endured in there he talked about district yeah. dog employees swimming out of the building that the water rose yeah. six feet so we're talking about two inches of water that rose six feet yeah. into that building I can't even imagine yeah. what that was like for the employees in there and for the dogs that were trapped and potentially drowning because of what was happening in minutes yeah. in that building. And that collapse wall he mentioned, that was new to me as well. The fact that the water was so high that the conditions so overpowering that a wall actually collapsed. So obviously the emotion that we saw on the outside of this dog boarding facility is likely nothing compared to the to the emotion and, and the shock and the horror and the anguish that was going on inside in the middle of this when when we showed up on the scene and we're just thinking about everybody who's associated um, with this the, the employees the, the families um, the, the the DC fire and EMS who continue to be here on the scene somewhat consoling each other the neighbors that came running to help it was it was um, it was unfortunate and we'll just kind of focus on the positive while at the same time we, we ask these tough questions about why it happened again and why can't we stop it especially along this corridor down here yeah Plus, the, the tragedy is that this had to happen for there to potentially be the real urgency around this issue now now the very people who the chief called heroes have to make the most painstaking calls to the people who have entrusted their yeah. their family members in their care and listen you know it it bears repeating here that, that the fire fighters and the first responders they are heroes they train for this every day but the people who care for these dogs this is not what they tra they are not trained to endure this yeah. kind of thing to care for dogs and yet here yeah. they were yet again uh, having to spring yeah. into action um, having to overcome their own fears to try to save the dogs and themselves in a lot of ways. Yeah, unless, and you think about it, the people who work in, in facilities like this, dog boarding facilities and work with animals, they do it because they, they love it. You know, they, they likely don't do it for the paycheck. They do it because they have a passion for the animals and because they hope they can bring a little joy and maybe the dogs or the animals bring joy to them. I mean, you, you are reminded that there were, there were, there were people, two-legged people um, involved in this as well. And those cars remain um, stranded and and we now have the number 20 different people under that underpass uh, who had to escape floodwaters some of them did it on their own under their own power through rushing floodwaters flash floodwaters which the fire chief said is extremely dangerous and some needed the assistance of, of DC fire and EMS rescue workers in boats 
you know, when we arrived on the scene here, there were DC Fire and EMS paddling down Rhode Island Avenue to rescue people in those cars. And, you know, he said those people were in fact in peril. Many of those people were in fact in peril. And if it weren't for the brave actions of, of DC Fire and EMS, this entire situation could have been so, 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 much, so much worse. But, you know, a lot of questions need to be asked and, and the chief kind of, he didn't sidestep, he just didn't have a lot to say about one of the biggest issues that needs to be addressed, which is that District Dogs has flooded before. They had the barricades up. Rafael Sanchez Cruz and WUSA 9 has reported on it. I was here two years ago on the northwest side of Rhode Island Avenue where this same scene unfolded. It was in a residential area and there was a lot of rescues then. And back then the neighbors were saying this program the city has to fix this is not working. Less answers we need about why this program isn't working. We Back sure do you. and people are tired of waiting for them and it is so sad that it has come to this where we are still trying to get answers after these tragic losses and near tragedies too today. All right Eric thank you to you and to James Hash for your work down there. We're going to continue to follow this story obviously and we'll have more on WUSA 9 News at 11 and online WUSA 9.com.